What's going on guys, Josh Polkuk here. Now on this channel, we've covered Klein or Kleinbot many different times. If you're not familiar with Klein, it was previously called Claude Dev and it has had many different updates in the past and it is still going strong. The founder of Klein is constantly pumping out new features, creative ideas, and honestly, just to be quite frank, things that we aren't seeing in any other AI IDE or any other AI pair programmer. It seems like every single week almost we're getting new updates and they're one shocking, but they're also just awesome and exciting. So I haven't talked about Klein in the last few weeks or so. And within the last month, they have pushed out a bunch of new updates. As you can see here, we got Klein version 2.20. We got Klein version 3. And we also have Klein version 3.1. Now, in today's video, we are going to be going over some of the most exciting updates in these new versions of Klein, showing you how to use this and why Klein possibly is one of the most, if not the most, best way you can use AI pair programming for free in your projects. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys so all links i cover in today's video will be linked down below and i'm gonna briefly go over some of these updates some of the main ones and then we're gonna dive into klein show you how you can actually use some of these main ones and see what it's actually made of so first off if you didn't see i did do a video covering this klein got computer use uh, a while ago this is a couple a few months ago actually so that is just something if you don't know about klein it has computer use now, last month, it did get an update to add custom tools to Klein using MCP. Some of you guys may know this since it's a month ago, but if you don't, um, it did get this update. So this is the model context protocol. I'm not going to dive super deep into explaining what that is, but it's something that Anthropic basically came out with. And it is really cool. This allows agents like Klein to plug and play into custom model, to, uh, custom tools, example, web search tool or GitHub tool. You can now add and configure MCP servers by clicking the next server icon in the menu bar. You can get Klein to make your own MCP. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So you can see here, you can take things a step further and Klein also has the ability to create custom tools for himself. Just say add a tool to that and watch as he builds and installs new capabilities specific to your workflow. For example, fetch Jira's ticket, get tickets AC and put Klein to work or match AWS EC2s, check server metrics and scale up or down. So a lot of cool stuff here. Um, yeah, like I said, if you want to know more about model context protocols, just do a quick search, watch a couple videos or ask perplexity um, and just check out some of the stuff that uh, Anthropic put out around it. I'm sure if you click this link right here, it's going to explain. Yeah, it takes you right to the repo here. So this has all the different SDKs, docs, examples, etc. Now, three weeks ago in version three, Klein came out with some big updates, and I'm excited to go over some of these as well as the new 3.1 in just a second. So first off is auto proof. So Klein's most requested feature is here. This is actually one. If you've seen some of my other videos on Klein, I always mention this one like, hey, I wish it had some sort of auto proof. But now you can toggle on specific things that you want Klein to auto approve and you can enable them, disable them. Uh, enable or, or disable for reading uh, files and directories, editing files, executing terminal commands using the browser and MCP servers. You can set a limit with how many API requests that it can make um, with it going out autonomously. And if you have a client working in the background, he can send system notifications for you when you need your attention, i.e. your approval, answer a question or when a task is complete really awesome stuff this essentially is like you having an agent where you can say hey go code me this or go do this and it can fully run autonomously autonomously with certain amounts of you know um, api requests threshold limits um, that you put in place just so it doesn't run up your bill or potentially does uh, unsafe commands or whatever the case may be and also to diff editing for large files all right so one client needs to make targeted edits to large files he now uses a search and replace diff format where he only has to output the content to replace rather than the whole file this allows for faster more reliable edits and prevents code deletion issues where previously unmodified sections of the code might have been replaced with comments like 
rest of code here, etc. Client can also fall back to the whole file editing for when it makes sense. Example, replacing boilerplate files, complete refactors, or when diff editing fails. And then lastly is the dot client rules. Now this is really huge. This is something that was definitely requested as well. This is similar if to, you're familiar to cursor, like dot cursor rules. So this is a, a file you can create where anything with dot uh, client rules will essentially be rules. So you can now specify custom instructions for your project by adding a root level uh, dot client rules file. And this allows you to define specific project behaviors and guidelines for client perfect for setting conventions, pointing to important documentation or providing context about your project's architecture. So this is very useful as well. And then the new update, which was posted 11 hours ago is version 3.1. Now this involves checkpoints, so compare and restore. So whenever client uses a tool, the extension takes a snapshot of the workspace so you can easily restore back to that point. When you hover over the message, you'll notice two new buttons. Compare, this lets you see a diff overview between the snapshot and the current state of your workspace. And then restore lets you choose one of the three options. While you'll mostly use the restore task and workspace option, the restore task only can be useful when you need to course correct or undo a problematic tool use and restore workspace only can be useful to check out different versions of your code without losing clients work and then see new changes so there is now a see new changes when client completes a task giving you an overview of all the changes made to your workspace since the last task completed this keeps you in the loop with auto approve enabled, saving you the trouble of reviewing a task message history. And then task size. So under the hood, the extension uses a git to efficiently track changes, which uses additional space when starting new tasks in client. Keep track of how much space a task takes with the new delete button, allowing you to manage disk usage easily. All right, so I did just want to give you a complete overview of all the different updates here that we've had in the last month. Reason being is there is so many and I'm going to now demonstrate some of these for you. Some of the main ones that I think are the most useful, but we won't be able to go over every single one that I just covered there. But now you kind of have a general overview. So first things first, you can use Klein in VS Code or Cursor or really any VS Code fork or whatever the case may be. And of course, you're going to go to extensions and then simply just download Klein. I'll also leave a link right here to download Klein right here. You can just sim simply click install and it will open up your VS Code. All right, once you have Klein open, make sure you're on version 3.1. If you already had Klein installed, just make sure that you click restart, which will be up here, and then it should be on the new version 3.1. Now, I'm gonna go over some of the new updates here. So as you can see here, we have MCP servers, okay? So this is the model context protocol, and you can edit MPC, uh, MCP settings where you can add different MCP servers. I'm not going to go over this too in depth right now. You can see a demo here. Okay, that was from the version 2.20 update. Now, the big update from version 3 was the auto approve. So down here, you'll see auto approve right here. You can uh, click this and now you can see auto approve allows client to perform the following actions without asking for permission. So we have read files and directories, edit files, execute save commands, uh, use the browser, um, use MCP servers. And then we can set our max request right here. So let's say I wanted to set it to like nine. Client will automatically make this, this many API requests before asking for approval to proceed with the task. And then we can also enable notifications. Okay, and I'm also going to include a dot client rules file right here. We're going to say for all the code you write, use comments explaining what the code does and why we're using it so I can learn. All right, so I'm going to start off with a very basic prompt. We're going to say create a modern CRM application with contact management, calendar feature, and task tracker. We're going to go ahead and click send here. We could also upload an image if we want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and click send. All right, and boom, we're off to the races. As you can see, Klein wants to create a new file, and we didn't have to approve that. He is just going right at it right now. He has all the auto approve features on. We can see the diff editing right here, and we can see all the code that he is adding. Okay, so he created the index.html. Now we're creating the style.css. One thing I actually forgot to have on was auto approve. Make sure you have that on. So it's actually going to auto approve everything. As you can see now, I didn't have to approve it. All right now we're creating the uh, jsutils.js right here. 
Okay, so so far we got the contacts.js as well, the calendar.js, and now the tasks.js and the app.js. We can see our entire application right here is being built fully autonomously. I'm literally could just go and go watch a YouTube video right now. Pretty crazy. Okay, so this is really cool now um, that it finished this. Now we are using Klein browser, as you can see right here. It's using the browser. So we can actually see the screenshot. It's testing out adding a new contact. Um, this is really crazy. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents. AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. And as you can see right here, we can actually see the task size. And this is something that is part of the version 3.1 update. All right, so now it's adding a test task, as you can see right here. All right, so one issue, of course, we just ran into is rate limits. And you're going to run into this if you're using Claude Anthropic. So what you could do is you could use Open Router, or you could switch the model to something like 3.5 Haiku. Actually, if you're using any other model other than Sonnet, you don't get computer use, just as a heads up. We could go to Open Router and do 3.5 Sonnet here and click Retry. Okay, so now, of course, you can see it is working. All right, so now it's actually adding some advanced features like subtask support, time tracking, tags, categories, task templates, advanced filtering and search, task st statistics. Okay, so Klein is just going in right now. It's writing like over 500 lines of code. So definitely running up my bill right now. So I'm actually going to stop it. Okay, so now if we actually preview this CRM, we can see modern CRM here. Of course, we could do other changes to it, make it a lot better, add dark mode, but we're just going to keep it basic for now. We can see we can add a new contact right here. Boom, we got our first contact. We can edit, delete, we can go to calendar here. All right, calendar's a little wonky. We could fix that, but we can add events. And then we have tasks right here. We can see statuses, priorities, categories, add new tasks. We have task templates right here, statistics, very, very basic. Now, what I want to highlight here is the new 3.1 feature, which is the ability for checkpoints. So at any single point here, you see all these different arrows where it did all these different API requests. We could actually go to one of them right here above, and we will see a couple different options. One, we can compare. So it will pull up a diff right here where we can see the code now versus um, the code that was there. Or we could do restore, and this allows us to restore task and workspace, where it will restore both the tasks and the workspace to that uh, to that point. Or where we can just restore the tasks. Okay, so this will delete messages after this point, and this does not affect the actual workspace of the project. Or three, we could just restore the workspace only, so this will restore the project's files to a snapshot taken at this point. And keep in mind the tasks may come become out of sync. All right, guys, so all in all, that's pretty much it for these client updates. Let me know what your favorite ones are in the comments down below. And let me know what your favorite AI IDE or pair programmer is. Is it Klein? Is it Cursor? Is it Windsurf? Let me know in the comments down below. Big shout outs to the founder of Klein. He has been putting in massive amounts of work and updates. So kudos to him. I've been seeing this project progress over this year and it's been crazy and it's really exciting to see him come up with all these new innovative ideas that really i don't see any other ai pair programmer or ide doing so this is really exciting and it is open source as well so so these are awesome updates for ai coding and the open source community but other than that guys that's pretty much it for this video we upload videos on time on ai marketing sales business growth so if you like that type of content you got some value here make sure to like the video comment down below and subscribe to stay up to date with the uploads also too guys if you haven't already joined our free facebook group and discord channel stridecommunity.com i'll leave a link down below and then also too guys you're going to want to join our stride ai academy i'll leave a link down below for that as well it is currently free in the future it may not be it's going to be jam-packed with loads of free resources, courses, tutorials, etc. So make sure to join down below. 
And then also too, guys, if you run a business and you need help with your systems, your CRM, your marketing, your sales, or if you want to implement AI agents like AI appointment setters, AI call centers into your business to streamline your sales process, increase your booking ratios, then book a call down below at executivestride.com forward slash apply and we can see if it's a good fit or not. Other than that, guys, I will see you in the next video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.